So today we're going to be talking about the biggest mistakes people make when setting up a trust. I've been setting up trust for high net worth individuals for a long time and over the last 20 years I've seen some trust disasters. Now these trust disasters usually happen for one of three reasons. The first reason is they hired an advisor who was more interested in making a profit than the client's best interest. Now this normally happens when a client hires a single jurisdiction advisor who only specializes in one jurisdiction, usually the one where they're based. Now that advisor many times, no matter what the high net worth individual situation is, they're going to try to fit that high net worth individual situation into a solution that their jurisdiction offers because that's how they make money, even when that's not the best thing for their client. So you must be careful of advisors that are always just selling one jurisdiction. You really want somebody who has a global overview, is going to analyze all the relevant jurisdictions and then decide which structure is going to be best for their client. The second reason for trust and foundation disasters is when a client tries to skimp on fees and they hire an advisor that's really not that good, makes mistakes, misses crucial steps, doesn't necessarily know exactly what they're doing. And finally, the high net worth individual just doesn't get advice at all or doesn't listen to the advisor's advice. Uh, before we get into this, we're going to be using a few different technical trust terms. So if you haven't watched our introduction to trust and foundations video, I'd suggest you do so before we get into this video. The link is down below in the description. Let's get into it. Mistake number one. This is by far the biggest mistake. Not properly planning trust management including management succession. How your trust is going to be managed is maybe the most important decision you can make because those are the people that are going to have control over your trust. Are you going to do a private trust company, for example, where the board's going to consist of friends and family, or are you going to use a professional trustee? This is super, super important. And also, you need to get into the nitty gritty, right? If you're going to do a private trust company, you need to talk about how the directors are going to be replaced, right? So management succession. If you don't like the trustee, how are you going to replace the trustee? Are there certain situations where you should switch from private management to professional management or vice versa? You need to think beyond your lifetime. You need to think about all the different scenarios and management issues, management vacancies that can occur, how those are going to be dealt with. This is key to having a successful trust. And I feel like a lot of advisors don't really give this enough thought. Planning the management of your trust is key to your trust achieving your objectives and goals. Now, let's get into it. Mistake number two, choosing private rather than professional management. Now, I understand if you're forming a trust as a settler and you're going to transfer your assets into it, you're giving control of your assets to a trustee. It's an uncomfortable situation. Most people are very nervous about going with professional management because they're scared that the professional trustee company is going to run away with their money or do something they don't want done with it. If you like our content, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. And for more strategic tips on international tax and wealth planning, subscribe to our email list and follow me on LinkedIn. Links below. A lot of people, especially ultra high net worth people, want to go with private trust companies where they can install their own people in the management board and maintain a little bit more influence. Maybe they can even sit on the board and maintain a little bit more control. Problem with this is there are rules with being a trustee, right? You have certain fiduciary duties to the beneficiaries. You can't do whatever you want. You need to do proper trust accounting. You need to do resolutions and meetings and meeting minutes and all that stuff to make sure that the trust is administered properly. And most private individuals don't have the expertise to do this. They wind up sort of making a mess of things which can jeopardize the benefits your trust offers. So a lot of times in my mind, professional management is better. If you don't do professional management, you want to go with private management, at least put somebody who has trustee experience on the board so you can ensure that things are being done properly. Mistake number three, properly funding the trust and retitling assets. Most people mistakenly believe that once a trust is signed, the trust exists. Not true. A trust doesn't come into existence until you transfer 
assets to that trust. So a lot of times you'll see trusts where it says that there's an initial settlement of like $10 or $100. And this is just to get something into the trust so that it can come into existence, even if it's $1. So it's very important to transfer some assets to your trust once it's been signed to ensure that it's funded and it legally exists. Now, the other mistake that I see done a lot of times is that assets are not properly retitled into a trust. There may be documents transferring it to the trust, the trust may acknowledge ownership, but the asset like a piece of real estate or art or something like that is not formally retitled into the trust. A lot of times courts will then treat that as not being in the trust. So it's very, very important that whatever assets you are transferring to your trust, that you document the transfer properly and that the trust assets are properly retitled. Mistake number four, maintaining too much control. This kind of goes what I was back to what I was talking to about with private management. A lot of people, they're transferring assets to their trust. They wanna have their cake and eat it too, meaning they still wanna control the assets, have use of those assets, but have all the advantages of having them in the trust. You can't really do that. If you maintain too much control over the trust, you have two big risks. Risk number one is a court's gonna say, well, you know, you basically, the assets are still yours because you have full control over them. We're gonna treat them as yours, no asset protection. Doing that can also lead to tax consequences in that a taxing authority or a court may treat those as still your assets and make you liable for the income tax on them. Mistake number five, treating trust assets as their own. This is something that again, you see a lot with private management. You have a settler who's very successful. He's used to controlling his empire his entire life. Now he transfers his assets into a trust. He wants to maintain control, so he's on the board, the private trust company, maybe by himself, maybe with a bunch of yes men. So he just does whatever he wants with the trust assets because he still views them as his own. Now, that's very dangerous because again, a court could come in and say, well, you're basically treating the assets like your own, you're disregarding the trust, therefore we're gonna treat it as, as if they're still your assets as well. That leads to tax consequences, loss of asset protection, so you need to be very careful about maintaining too much control. Mistake number six, waiting until a problem arises to set up an asset protection trust. Once you're getting sued or once you're under threat of getting sued, if you put assets into a trust, it's gonna be a fraudulent conveyance. In most jurisdictions, there's a provision where they can claw that back out of the trust. You're not gonna get any of that asset protection. So it's really important to set up a trust when nothing's going on, when everything's calm. You need to set it up before a problem arises, before you have potential liability, otherwise it is not going to work. Finally, problem number seven, and this one only pertains to US persons, and this is failing to report their foreign trust. Listen, the IRS wants to know everything, especially when it comes to US person foreign income or assets, and especially when it comes to foreign trusts, because they already sort of look at them as if you're doing something bad sometimes when you set up a foreign trust. So it's very important. There's a lot of uses, even for Americans in setting up a foreign trust, but you need to make sure you report it properly. At a bare minimum, filing form 3520, 3520A, probably an FBAR, maybe form 8938, sort of situation specific, but talk to an advisor, make sure you report it properly. The penalties for not reporting a foreign trust are astronomical. You don't want to have to pay them. So those are the seven biggest mistakes when people set up trusts. Like I said before, I've been helping high net worth individuals set up trusts, protect their assets, do their estate planning, maintain privacy for a long time. If you're interested in achieving those benefits, we'd love to help. You can email us at info at esquiregroup.com or visit us on the web at www.esquiregroup.com. Thank you.